Film centers on an elderly widower named Carl Fredrickson, voiced by Edward Asner, and an earnest young wilderness explorer named Russell, Jordan Nagai. By tying thousands of balloons to his home, 78-year-old Carl sets out to fulfill his lifelong dream to see the wilds of South America and to complete a promise made to his childhood sweetheart and beloved wife, Ellie. At eight years old, Carl Fredrickson was a fan of Charles F. Muntz, who piloted his own self-made dirigible, Spirit of Adventure. One day, while running down a sidewalk, pretending to pilot his balloon, a regular blue balloon with the words Spirit of Adventure written on the side, Carl hears a voice coming from a dilapidated house. Curious, Carl enters the house and meets Ellie, a young girl and fellow fan of Muntz, and they become close friends almost instantly. Ellie's startling introduction causes Carl to release his balloon, which gets stuck in the attic. With Ellie's encouragement, he tries to get it back by crossing a single wooden plank across the second floor of the house. However, the wooden plank breaks and Carl ends up breaking his arm. Ellie visits him at his bedroom later that night, returning his balloon to him, and shows Carl her secret adventure book. She also tells Carl of her plans to go to Paradise Falls, the same place Muntz had visited on his recent expedition to capture an exotic creature. Film centers on an elderly widower named Carl Fredrickson, voiced by Edward Asner, and an earnest young wilderness explorer named Russell, Jordan Nagai. By tying thousands of balloons to his home, 78-year-old Carl sets out to fulfill his lifelong dream to see the wilds of South America and to complete a promise made to his childhood sweetheart and beloved wife, Ellie. At eight years old, Carl Fredrickson was a fan of Charles F. Muntz, who piloted his own self-made dirigible, Spirit of Adventure. One day, while running down a sidewalk, pretending to pilot his balloon, a regular blue balloon with the words Spirit of Adventure written on the side, Carl hears a voice coming from a dilapidated house. Curious, Carl enters the house and meets Ellie, a young girl and fellow fan of Muntz, and they become close friends almost instantly. Ellie's startling introduction causes Carl to release his balloon, which gets stuck in the attic. With Ellie's encouragement, he tries to get it back by crossing a single wooden plank across the second floor of the house. However, the wooden plank breaks and Carl ends up breaking his arm. Ellie visits him at his bedroom later that night, returning his balloon to him, and shows Carl her secret adventure book. She also tells Carl of her plans to go to Paradise Falls, the same place Muntz had visited on his recent expedition to capture an exotic creature. Carl marries Ellie, and they begin rebuilding the old house, making it their home. Ellie becomes a tour guide for a zoo, and Carl becomes a balloon salesman, working side by side. They go through many stages of their life together, and after Ellie suffers a miscarriage, and they are told they can't have a child, the couple remembers their childhood dream of visiting Paradise Falls, so they decide to save up some money, but unforeseen events, a tire blows out, Carl breaks his leg, a tree crashes into the house and breaks the roof during a storm, force them to use the money they had been saving. Carl and Ellie grow old together, working at the zoo selling balloons and giving tours, respectively. While cleaning the house, Carl notices the picture of their house perched at the top of Paradise Falls after tucking the savings jar away and leaving the trip out of mind. Carl then goes to buy tickets to Paradise Falls, presumably with retirement money. He then takes Ellie on a picnic, bringing the tickets as a surprise for her. Carl wakes up in the morning to find Kevin gone. Russell and Doug are in panic, but soon they see the bird on the roof of his house with a pile of food. Doug explains that Kevin is collecting food for her babies, which leads Russell to realize that Kevin was a girl the whole time. Kevin called for her babies, and a faint peeping could be heard. Kevin runs to her babies and leaves. Carl forces Doug and Russell along, leaving the latter depressed. As they're walking, they encounter Alpha, Gamma, and Beta. Doug leaks out that he lost the bird, and the rest of the dogs force Carl and Russell to come along with Doug to their master. The dogs bring Carl and Russell to a giant cave. Inside are dozens of dogs, all with special collars. Out from the shadows comes an elderly but fit man. The man apologizes for getting Carl into this situation and gives them a goodbye. After a moment, though, Carl calls to the man again. He discovers that the man, the dog's master, is actually Charles Muntz. Glad to see a fan of his, Muntz invites Carl and Russell inside the cave, where Muntz's dirigible, the spirit of adventure, is stationed. Carl and Russell park the house beside the cave and enter the dirigible as Doug gets the cone of shame, a giant funnel, 
put on his head for his wrongdoings. Foot calls. Months for dinner. Months. Hears Alpha's voice and fixes the problem with his collar. Carl and Russell are invited to dinner. Before long, they see hundreds of photos, drawings, and information on Kevin around the room. Carl realizes what is happening. Muntz is searching for Kevin. The Beast of Paradise falls. Russell calls out that they saw the bird, but Carl quickly adds that it ran away. Carl looks out the window to see Kevin in the cave. He rushes Russell out of the dirigible, but the dogs quickly chase after him, understanding why they had suddenly left his months sees Kevin on top of Carl's house, Doug tries to command the dogs to stop chasing them, but Doug is knocked away by Alpha, removing the cone of shame. Soon, Kevin arrives at the edge of a cliff. The house is moving forward, dragging them off the cliff. Everybody grabs on as they are taken midair. The dogs jump to catch them, but fall into a rushing river. Carl, Russell, and Kevin land on the other side of the canyon, but Alpha bites Kevin, injuring her. Russell begs to stop and help Kevin. Carl looks up to see that the balloons are getting weaker and weaker. Carl reluctantly agrees to stop, remembering his promise to Russell as well. The soaked dogs return to Muntz, who reacts angrily. When the dogs explain that Doug is on Kevin's side, he comes up with the idea to use Doug's tracking device. Meanwhile, Carl and the group think that they're safe. They decide to continue moving with Kevin on the porch of the house. Russell tells Carl that the wilderness is a lot wilder than he thought it would be. Kevin hears her baby's cry for help and darts towards them into the cave. Suddenly, a spotlight falls on Kevin Munt's dirigible had followed her. Kevin tries to run, but Annette shoots out of the dirigible and catches her. Carl runs to save the house and stops sawing. Immediately, the dogs swarm Kevin, they take her into the dirigible and leave. Russell is upset that Carl practically gave Kevin to months. Soon, Carl finally arrives at the falls. He has finally achieved his goal and kept his promise to Ellie, but doesn't feel happy. Russell throws his sash on the ground in anger, saying that he doesn't want it anymore. Carl picks up the sash and looks towards the house. Carl goes inside and quietly began to tidy up. The house is a mess, everything is all over the floor. Carl takes a seat in his chair for a moment. He picks up Ellie's adventure book beside his feet. He flips through the pages, up until the page marked stuff I'm going to do. Thinking that the pages will simply be blank, Carl goes to shut it, but is surprised when he notices a bit of picture on the next page, the pages are not empty. They are filled with pictures of Carl and Ellie's life together. The final photo is of them, elderly, and in their chairs. Below, in the corner, Ellie has written a simple, heartfelt message. Thanks for the adventure, now go have a new one. Love, Ellie. Tries to save Kevin, but he is quickly captured by Muntz. Muntz looks out the window to see Carl and the house. He demands the dogs to get rid of Carl if they see him. The floor below Russell starts to lower, sending him down a ramp to nowhere. Carl catches sight of this and puts on Russell's sash. He steers the house towards the dirigible and jumps to Russell, saving him from death. Russell says to Carl that they should work together to help Kevin, but Carl just wants Russell safe and demands that he stays in the house. Russell leaves the house but falls off the porch. He grabs the garden hose and is dangling for his life. The wind pushes the house towards Muntz's dirigible and knocks Russell against the window of the cockpit. Muntz sees Russell and demands that the dogs take down the house, they get into airplanes and shoot at Russell and the balloons. Carl, Doug, and Kevin sneak through the corridors of the airship, looking for a way out. Suddenly, Muntz emerges from the shadows and pulls out a sword. Muntz kicks Doug out of the door and locks it. In front of Doug now are Alpha and the remainder of the pack. Muntz slashes at Carl as he tries to defend himself with his cane. Carl gets knocked to the ground. Carl has an idea. He spits out his false teeth at Muntz, knocking him back. Carl grabs his teeth and gets back up. Back in the cockpit, Doug is being knocked against the controls, turning the ship. Muntz stumbles in the other room, giving Carl and Kevin an escape chance. 
they jump out the window and begin to climb the airship, with Munts right behind. Back in the cockpit, the dog pack traps Doug, who is hiding under the dashboard. As Alpha sticks his head through the steering wheel to reach him, Doug sticks a lampshade over his head, breaking his collar, returning his high-pitched voice, and trapping his head in the steering wheel. Believing Alpha is now wearing the cone of shame, the pack take Doug as their leader and listen to his every command. Outside, Russell sees Carl and Kevin in trouble. Meanwhile, Carl and Kevin make it to the top of the dirigible, where Doug joins them. Russell steers to the top of the dirigible, everybody grabs on and steps on the porch. Munts reaches the top of the dirigible, now holding a hunting rifle. A bullet rips through the balloon strings with one shot, sending a good amount of them floating away. The house hits the top of the airship, sending Carl tumbling out and the house sliding off the top. Carl grabs onto a hose to try to stop the house from falling. He yells to Russell, Doug, and Kevin to escape the house. Munts fires at the porch, forcing them to run inside the house. Munts jumps onto the front porch and bangs on the front door of the house with his rifle. Carl warns Russell and Doug to hang on to Kevin just as Munts crashes through the front door. Just before Munts can shoot the bird, Carl pulls out a chocolate bar, enticing Kevin, who knocks off Munts's rifle. She jumps through the front window, and Russell's hat falls off of his head, but when Munts lunges after Kevin, his foot becomes entangled in some balloon lines, and when they break off, Munts falls to his death thousands of feet below. Carl manages to save everybody else, but his house drifts through the clouds. Together, Carl and Russell take off for home. The dogs are now happy, not ferocious, as Carl is now their master. Back in the city, the senior wilderness explorer's ceremony has finally begun. Russell steps up to the front of the audience. The camp master asks for someone to come up for Russell, and Carl has arrived just in time. He awards Russell with the grape soda badge that Ellie had given him. The film ends with a shot of Paradise Falls, where it's revealed that Carl's house has landed in the spot overlooking the falls exactly where Ellie pictured it. Over the credits, Carl has started a new adventure book detailing his life as he settles into retirement while spending lots of time with Russell. Carl moves into Shady Oaks, where the dogs bring happiness to the residents while Carl lives happily with Russell and Doug by his side. Kevin is in South America with her kids.